Ron Barassi was a champion player and an inspirational captain and coach. He will undoubtedly leave an indelible mark on this great game of football. And fans are already starting to pay tribute to his monumental legacy. A short time ago, I spoke to a passionate and emotional Demons fan. He's just such a, a great loss. Uh, great inspiration for all Melbourne people uh, that saw him play, saw him coach and and just, um, you know, rejoiced in the, in the memory of what he, what he did for the club and for the game. So, Mary, a short time ago, a statement released on behalf of his family reads, After a full and extraordinary life, Ronald Dale Barassi, aged 87, left us today due to complications from a fall. He died peacefully, surrounded by a loving family. Political leaders, Mary, are also remembering Barassi. The Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, Albanese rather, tweeted a short time ago. Of the word, a fearless player and leader, a visionary coach and a tireless champion for the growth and success of Australian rules football. And the AFL, Mary, has also made some comments describing Barassi as the most important figure in Australian football of the last 70 years since the Second World War. So, Mary, as the community mourns Barassi's death, we take a look back on an extraordinary life. Regarded as one of the game's visionaries, Australian football was always a big part of Ron Barassi's life. His father's career with the Demons was cut short when he was killed during the Second World War, but the club took young Ron in and he lived with the legendary Melbourne coach, Norm Smith. He was absolutely exceptional. A leader, a, a thinker, a fellow who had a lot of courage. Barassi crashes in, leaving bodies in his wake. Barassi was a star during the Demons' glory years, helping them to six premierships between 1957 and 1963. A tall, fearless player, he pioneered the position of Ruck Rover. Barassi in the thick of all the heavy going. I didn't like getting beaten for the ball or on the scoreboard. So all those things are, uh, combined in a, a physical contact game, which is it's a very handy asset to have. But his desire to coach would lead to what Melbourne fans considered an act of betrayal. In 1964, he moved to Carlton and as captain coach won two premierships. In the 1970 grand final, the Blues came back from a 44-point halftime deficit to beat Collingwood following Barassi's pleas to handball at all costs. It's been coined the birth of modern football. We had to do desperate things in the second half because when you're well behind, you've got nothing to do. So we, we went for, for breaks, so, so to speak. From Carlton, he went to North Melbourne and won another two premierships with his tough coaching style. Darryl, you are a I'll tell you why. You've got the bloody football game beaten. You come down here, not concentrate it. A car crash in 1976 cost him his spleen and a broken leg. But as an active player in the football media, Barassi didn't let a stay in hospital prevent him from an interview. Now, there's no question that uh, I won't be there for the finals. In fact, I have to be there on Saturday. Coaching stints at Melbourne and Sydney oh, didn't yield the same success, but Barassi continued to play an active role in football, the media and business. He was never far from the spotlight. As a 72-year-old in 2009, he stepped in to stop an altercation on the streets of St Kilda. It resulted in broken ribs and bruising, but also earned him numerous bravery awards. But would he do it again? Oh, I think I would. When I say I think, uh, it's an instantaneous thing, and that's, that's how I feel as a person. A brave man on and off the field.